Welcome to Standing Grace with Alan McQuarrie, a ministry of Grace Community Church in Brockville, Ontario. I'm your host, Alex Philippi. We all know life is hard, but Jesus is here for you. He wants to encourage you through his word and remind you that you can always stand in his grace. It's nice to be honored or at least be appreciated by others, isn't it? Especially when they include us or invite us along to something special. You know, one of the great things that we have in our lives is just the fact that sometimes people do appreciate what we do. And they honor us and they appreciate us by doing things for us. Well, you know, we need to also appreciate, as well as each other, we need to appreciate the Lord and to appreciate the privilege that we are given in serving him. I know as soon as I say that, people say, oh, you're talking about working in the church, and that doesn't lead anywhere good, because I did that before. No one appreciated me, and I was criticized for everything I ever did. I understand that, and unfortunately, that should not happen, but sometimes it does. But we're not talking about serving in the church for the sake of serving, nor are we talking about trying to get other people to acknowledge that we've served faithfully. It's all about, rather, the Lord. We need to serve the Lord because he deserves our service. And I know that sometimes when we do those services for the Lord, they often come back to only bite us. But we're not talking about how other people treat us today. I want to talk about how the Lord treats you. Because it is a privilege to serve the Lord. Regardless of all the pain we've had in our past, regardless of all the fighting and the quarreling, it still is a privilege to serve the King of Kings. He sees what we do. He knows our motivation. He appreciates it when we serve him. And he honors you when you serve him because the Lord knows that he does need you. If you know Christ as your Savior, then he has given you a spiritual gift. And that gift wasn't given randomly. It's not just distributed to anybody who shows up at church on Sunday. It is given to the redeemed of the Lord, those who have come to a place of repentance, where they've trusted in Christ alone and they've given their hearts to him. They've pleaded, Lord, forgive me for all that I've done that have dishonored you. I give my life to you and I want to serve you and I want to lift up your name. The Lord gives a spiritual gift to us, a, a gift that we didn't have moments before and it is to be used for the edification and the building up of God's people. And so if you are a saved individual, if you have the Spirit of God indwelling you, then you have also a spiritual gift. And the Lord wants you to use it because he gave it to you to be used. I don't want to get to heaven and find out that the Lord says, why did you hide that gift that you were given? I don't want to get to heaven and have the Lord chasten me because in some way I hid my gift under a basket. And so I encourage you to say, yes, look beyond all the past and say to the Lord, Lord, how can I serve you? We're looking at Luke chapter 10. This is literally the last number of weeks before the Lord would go to the cross. And you have the Lord Jesus, who is God himself, walking on earth. And with him are the 12 apostles that he touched and gave the authority to perform miracles to. He transmitted a power and authority to them that seemingly they had the rest of their lives. But in the midst of all that, we read that the Lord appointed 72 more, and he gave them the gift of, of healing. Now, it doesn't seem as if they had that the rest of their life. It was more of a temporary mission to carry out the work until the cross came, until the, the Lord went to the cross. 
but he gave them that ability and he sent them out in groups of two to encourage one another so they wouldn't be left alone, to be the prayer support while one talked, the other would pray, just to be a group of two. And he sent them out. So there were 35, 36 groups going out ahead of the Lord. And we ask ourselves, why did the Lord need more people? Couldn't he, as God himself on earth, or with the 12 apostles, couldn't they adequately do the work themselves that the Lord needed to find more people? Well, it seems as if, as we move towards the cross, the Lord wanted more people to hear and understand what he was doing. And so 36 groups of people, groups of two, went out before him, spreading the word, preparing the word, bringing people to an enthusiasm for who he was. This is probably the catalyst behind the triumphal entry, where so many people came and were excited when the Lord came into Jerusalem on that day. And so as the Lord moved forward and as he sent out this group of people, he told them, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest, for the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The Lord Jesus looked at his culture, looked at his society, looked at the people around him, and he saw that the harvest was plentiful. Now, I don't see that. When I look at our neighborhoods, when I look at the stores, when I walk down the street, I see people, and seemingly they're disinterested in the things of God. Seemingly they don't care about spiritual things. And yet, from God's perspective, when he looks at our community, when he looks at our town, when he looks at our city, he sees a harvest that is plentiful. The only problem is me. I'm the laborer, and I'm not doing my job. The laborers are few. We need to understand that God is doing a great work. The parable of the mustard seed foretold that out of a small seed, a great tree would grow that would fill the earth. And indeed, the harvest is plentiful. This is a statement of faith because I don't see it. What I do see is what my eyes tell me, and that is that people don't care about God. But that's not so. The Lord needs you. You are a laborer for him. He wants you to serve him. And I understand that sometimes we have lost the enthusiasm or the excitement to serve in church again. I understand that. But I do want to encourage you that there's a great privilege in serving Christ. There's a great privilege in doing the work of God. We are his laborers and we are his ambassadors. And the Lord is making his appeal through you and through me. What a privilege that is that the Lord wants to use us. Because in my understanding, God could do so many other things to announce his coming. But he doesn't. He uses you with all your imperfections, with all of your inadequacies, in all of your pain and past experience. If you love the Lord, he's indwelled you. He's given you a spiritual gift. And he has chosen to use you and to give you the task of being his laborers. And so the Lord says, be prepared to be used. I need you. I want you. If you're listening to the podcast today, I want to encourage you to say to the Lord, Lord, it is a privilege for me to serve you again. I haven't been where I should be spiritually I haven't been walking as I ought to. I know, Lord, that I have neglected you in my prayer life or my devotional life, but I also know that I am your child and I need to serve you once again. And thank you, Lord, for the privilege that you bestow upon me to be used even though my past is so rough and I am so inexperienced or so 
unqualified by the world standards. However, I am a laborer and I want to serve you. These are the things that God wants to hear from you this morning. These are the things that the Lord has done for you. And I would encourage you today just to ask the Lord to put the enthusiasm of serving him back in your heart. Put the enthusiasm of doing something significant back in your heart again. And put aside all the pain that has happened and say, Lord, I'm here to serve you. I'm Alan McQuarrie. Continue with us next week on this podcast as we together serve the Lord and stand in his grace. Thank you for being with us today on Standing Grace. I'm Alex Philippi inviting you to join us for more teaching like this in person at Grace Community Church in Brockville, Ontario. And to join us online at standinggrace.com. Until next time.